All right. <clears throat> Welcome to episode three of Corn Fed with a side of Cajun sauce. I'm your host, the Corn Fed part of the podcast, Joel Lincoln, based here in Charlotte, North Carolina, part of Game Shots Basketball, Charlotte Skills Factory, and the Queen City Ballers, doing a lot of training with individuals of all ages. Um, and the co-host of the podcast, the Cajun Sauce, Tony Sterling, is back here for another week. He is enjoying his first week of summer. Tony, how are you feeling? Doing good. Doing real good, man. How you? You know, uh, if I was any better, I'd be in summer, but we're feeling good. Busy few weeks. You know, it's state testing time, so we're getting into that. Uh, you know, I'm not saying we're on autopilot or coming in and, you know, we're, we're playing the hits and as far as PE goes, if we're not having fun, we're switching up the activity. How you doing? Keep it moving. So, uh, speaking of summer and one thing I'm today's podcast is going to be is about some, some, uh, goals and taking for your player development specifically in the off season individually to the next level. So Tony, before we started this, we were talking about, you had, high school practice uh, this week, things like that. So from a coach's perspective, how do you guys view June? Cause you'll probably, you're going to play around 20, 25 games practice. What probably four days a week, five days a week. Uh, Yeah. We kind of cut that in half this, um, this summer instead of playing that many games, we done probably play like 12 to 14 or whatever, going to a couple of um, team camps or whatever, um, but we'll practice, you know, in the morning and uh, get some uh, weightlifting in after practice and stuff like that. So this week we, we practice uh, Monday and today or whatever from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Then for an hour, our guys went to the weight room and lift, you know, for about, a, you know, about an hour or whatever they've been working on core strength um you know stuff like that uh main thing that we want for our guys is be consistent you know uh being at practice uh every day you know that that might sound simple or whatever but um you know you you know the kids during the, um during school time you know you are already at school or whatever. So uh, that was always, a, you know, a normal routine for themselves. So now, you know, during the summer, they got to have a routine for themselves to wake up, you know, wake themselves up instead of just having their parents or whatever, wake them up, you know, be ready for, for, for you know, uh, for the classroom and stuff like that. So now we just practice and worry about basketball. You know, we kind of run into – and not really issues or whatever. Like for for example, um, getting you know, far as like them getting to practice, you know, we might have to pick them up, or you know, uh, some of them might have like a driver's edge. You know, uh, that's that's one of the biggest things during the summer, which we don't try to. Uh, there's no consequences for them to miss uh, practice because of the driver's edge, because you know. They need that, and uh, you know we all been young. We all been that that age to where they, you know, where we need to get that that license or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, but that's the main thing. Is that guys just some just keep them in the gym, you know, um, and you, you see what kind of chemistry we have, have. You know, we pretty much bring everyone back. You know, this this upcoming season or whatever we. You know, we have some young guys that are really good. You know, main thing like we tell them is to you know improve every day. You know, and uh, I was listening to um, Kobe Bryant's podcast with um, you know uh, Stephen Jackson and uh, Matt Barnes, and, uh, and one thing he was saying: the kids are in the gym these days, but you know they're working with trainers. You know, um, how about you just? You know, get them in the gym, uh, play pickup, you know, let them develop their own creativity or whatever. And I kind of see that. Yeah. Whatever. And I've been working out some. Yeah. And I've been working out some kids uh, since they, they came in from college. Uh, 
Matty Howe that's at uh, Millsaps uh, College in Mississippi. Uh, Libby Thompson will be a first year at uh, Loyola University in New Orleans. Um, coming off a great, you know, great high school career. You know, she won a state championship at Punch Tool High School or whatever, uh, her junior year, uh, playing against the number one uh, player in the country, Michaela Williams, you know, she beat her her junior year. And then, you know, this year she, she you know, they lost. So um, they got Jordan Reams from uh, Bolger Pass Community College or whatever. He played for, for us, uh, you know, the year before last. And he, you know, just finished up his first year or whatever. So uh, I'm getting in the groove back of training, you know, the, you know, the, you know, kids or whatever. So, but in the end of the day, like I tell them, they, you know, try to go f somewhere where y'all can play pickup against somebody. Like I tell Libby and Maddie, you know, try to see if y'all can find a um, a pickup game where y'all playing, you know, you know, get y'all playing against guys or whatever, you know, trying to keep you, keep your endurance and stuff like that. It don't have to be every day or whatever. So pretty good. Yeah, I think pretty in good. the off season, I, 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 I'm I on the same accord as you in terms of off season. You know, if you're the best player in the gym, you got to go find you a different gym, Um, you know, by any means. And I think, yeah, for the ladies, whether it's playing with guys, whether it's playing other high level girls, I think you just got to find that that competition in the summer. And depending on where you're at, that can be either pretty easy or can be rather challenging. Um, and I think that's great that you're getting them in the gym. We're actually going to be we're, we're going to switch around on the schedule here, um, be adaptable. And we're going to start talking about a little player development specifically in the summer. Um, and Tony Tech touched on what I think is very underrated is doing things competitively in the summer um, and incorporating uh other kid, other players, live play in your individual workouts. Um, a guy that I train with here in Charlotte, Tyrone McDaniel. Um, him and Ed Coda used to be pre before the pandemic. They would do uh, train and play, which was exactly what it is: train for an hour, hoop for an hour. Um, and we're going to be bringing that back this summer, um, Wednesday and Thursday nights here in Charlotte. Um, from six to eight, um, make sure you reach out. That'll be for all middle school, high school, and college players. Um, we'll have a couple courts going. We'll train, obviously, boys, girls, everybody that's back for the summer. Um, but incorporating that live play. And I think where the great players and the players that do make that jump from, you know, like uh, your girl Howell, who is now going to be, uh, you know, she's probably what? She's a sophomore now going into her junior year. The how yes. girl I worked with. Yeah, right. So like for her to make that yeah. jump, I think the players that in that competition work on something get a lot better. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, different podcasts like you touched on with like Steven Jackson, Matt Barnes, they talk in, you know, different things. You see clips, guys, things on the internet, like when you're working those Rico Hine runs and things like guys are really being in their bag and trying to be intentional and how that translates for high school players. And, you know, I shouldn't have even said they're getting their bag, like, but they're working on stuff. And I think the number one thing watching a lot of basketball and that's all ages, different circuits. We just had the tournament, the Phenom hoops in Rock Hill last week and made it down there briefly um, after being an elite 75 on Saturday. And we'll touch on that later, but not only doing things competitively, and working on something, but your training should directly connect and correlate with that. Um, you know, every time you step in the gym individually, and this is for all ages, I think it's important, obviously working on dribbling, stationary, uh, moving with pace, change of direction, things like that. You're obviously working on starting and stopping, especially for younger players. And I would even say middle school, 1000% high school. And that's what some of the content actually at Tony and I, I previewed it for Tony before some of the content we're bringing out tomorrow with the line drills. I think those are all ages. One of, if not the best way to start your practice, um, you can be the same ones, different ones. And um, we're going to start showcasing the variety of things you can do with um, line drills. 
but I think, you know, working on some dribbling, a little bit of passing. Um, we tweeted about this earlier this week, not only good players and players that have vision, see what is going on. They see what's going to go on. Um, so developing that vision, I think working on passing with live defense or with just a defender. Um, if you don't have a defender, if you're working on it by yourself or with one or two other teammates, you know, doing the line drills and doing it with imagination. Um, so passing dribbling. And then this is where I think is different. Um, these are the five elements you should have in your off season workout, passing, dribbling, shooting. So like your technique, your or form shooting, things like that. And I, in you know, when I, it comes to shooting and I've got another video that'll be pre- going on live next week, that's going to be talking about shooting versus scoring. And when I'm talking about shooting, that includes catch and shoot, but that also includes the process and working through as if it were any other sort of lesson where you're going to go through a warm up, you're going to go through and you're going to get some, you know, just reps where you're grooving the path, things like that. And then you get into the fourth element, which is scoring where you're doing specific things, things you do in a game, things that your coach trusts you to do in a game, um, things that are within your role or reasonably within your role. Um, Good high school programs usually don't allow 10 or 12 dribbles in a half court. Um, Good high school teams usually pass and cut. Great high school teams pass, cut, change speeds. Um, Are great actors or great actresses in terms of they sell things, whether that's a, a pass fake. Um, a cut, a back cut, all that. Um, I think those are some of the elements when you're working on scoring, whether that's picking roles, things like that, incorporating what I call nickels and dimes. If you've only got an hour um, or if you've got especially 45 minutes to go hard and you maybe just have one other rebounder, I would recommend going nickels, meaning every shot you're doing, you're doing five of them. And your goal is to make at least three out of five. If you're making zero or one, maybe make it two, but working towards that three out of five, four out of five. And if you have a little more time that, you know, hour plus where you can really get in some great reps, I would recommend doing dimes, which are sets of 10. And again, holding the standard to six out of 10. And if you've accomplished that, make it harder. If you haven't accomplished that, obviously lower it a little bit. But I think when you're working this summer, if you add nickels and dimes to your repertoire of things as you're going in and working on. I mean, you can get an easy hundred shot. When I say an easy hundred shots, I'm saying if you go dimes of pick and roll reads, right? So you go rejection layup, 10 of those hard rejection floater, 10 of those hearts. That's 20. If you're looking at dimes, right? So then you go to come off of it, little mid range float. Then you're sitting there, you're at 30, you go next dime, that mid range, pull that sidestep, step back, whichever is yours particular. And then you get 10 pull up threes. You got 50 shots. You got from both sides. It's a hundred shots that are game shots that aren't a ton of dribbles being efficient um, with imagination. If you have a rebounder, you can toss it out, jab, set baseline, come off that pick and roll, go hard, two or three dribbles, pop up and give yourself, get that workout going. And then if you happen to live in an area that has good training, um, if you're in Dunn Springs, obviously Tony, if you are in Charlotte, myself, Tyron McDaniel does great stuff. There are other people around the city, but I am new here. Also, I don't know everyone. Those are just the guys that I've seen, um, that do great work, but really tracking and documenting what you're doing and anybody can count to 10, right? And if you can't be focused enough to, especially if you're doing a nickel, remember I've shot five shots and of those five shots, how many did you make? I would just question like how serious you're taking it. That's like saying, if I'm on doing a math test, like, yeah, I'm, you know, two, I see two and two, but is it two minus two? Is it two times two? And I'm just assuming every single one is two plus two. I think that really, when, if you can't be focused enough to keep track of how many you make out of five, how many you make out of 10, like we're not planned out enough. We can verbalize if you're in the gym by yourself, you're working on your game in the park. Like you can just say one out of two, one for one, one for three, two, five, two, four, two, four, three, five, whatever it is like, and call that out as you're going. Like you're only silly if you don't keep track of it. Um, And trainers, like that's how you separate yourself because the fifth element first was pass dribble. And that includes starting, stopping, changing speeds, shooting which is like your technique form shooting a lot of catch and shoot and adding some competition um to that number four is your scoring which are game specific shots that you do 
every single time. And then fifth, which Tone kicked off this conversation with, which is competition, whether that's ones, twos, threes, especially in the off season, I think three on three is just underrated and it really gets your guys conditioned, especially if you're playing with a pace. And if you're in a state that has a shot clock, even if you're not like having a shot clock, where things are going with and maybe adding a quick little dribble limit four dribbles. Like, so you're not dribbling the air out of it, things like that, where guys are getting more touches, more space, more possessions, um, more games, like three on three is great for your condition. And we shouldn't be running lines um, in the summer, unless like somebody's just being a doofus. Um, so using those five elements and then adding in the competition. And then the last final thought is there's always competition. We mentioned nickels and dimes, but there's also, you can, you know, a time, two minute shooting. If you're dialed in on the YouTube channel, two minute shooting, you got to make 20 shots in two minutes, boom, at a time. So it's competitive. And that's a great one as you're, you know, done your form shooting, you're starting to do some things at transitioning into some two minute shooting. So now I got to make, hold my habits accountable with a time with makes. So now I'm upping it. Right. And if making 20 is easy, then go two in a row from each spot. Okay. Once you get two in a row from each spot, you still get your 20 makes, but every two are in a row, five spots inside, five spots on the three. Okay. Now I got to make two in a row. And if I miss two in a row, I go back a spot or I, you know, if I'm not working on mids, I can do the same pattern, but from three, all those adding that next element of time. So you got your time. You can have a score, meaning I have to make so many in a row. This is nickels and dimes, three out of five, six out of 10, seven out of 10, four out of 10, whatever that standard is for you and holding yourself accountable in each one of those reps. And then obviously you can do an opponent. It could be who's going to get the drill done first, tone or I. It could be we're playing ones. And um, with that competition, just to circle back on our final piece here before I let Tony pop back on and uh, interject his wisdom would be making sure when you are in that competition working on something and especially youth players, high school players, use your weak hand. Like if it's May 24th, if on August 24th, you don't have a weak hand, that's almost as equal as your dominant. You wasted your summer 100% controllable on you. Get it done. Tony, what am I missing in terms of, and maybe you can offer a great uh, team perspective as you're in that season now of development. Obviously we all like to win or they're keeping score. We want to win, but also you're in developmental mode. There's going to be no state championship handed out in Louisiana in June. So team development wise, what am I missing? Yeah, you touched on every aspect of, of how to improve. Um, basically, you just need to be consistent. And, anything, you know, anything that the coach tell you to, you know, improve on to do, you know, like offensively, defensively, you know, um, uh, off the court stuff, maybe, you know, um, you know, coach want everybody to be at practice, you know, at 9 a.m. Uh, you, you know, if you have a couple of teammates that live around you, maybe you can pick them up or, make, uh, or, um, Excuse me. Maybe you can uh, remind them the night before, you know, you know yep. develop that chemistry uh, team wise. Uh, but everything that you touched on was uh, pretty accurate. I mean, it's, it don't have to be in no specific order or anything or whatever, because everybody got different um, learning abilities. Um, different things fundamentally that they need to uh, work on. Uh, mm -hmm. Or is, can I be a good teammate for the whole month of June? You know, uh, can I come to practice, uh, you know, early every day? You know, can I be, at, you know, be at the gym before the coach get there? Mm -hmm. know, stuff like that. So, yeah, just on everything. Yeah, if they're uh, if they're getting if you're there, they better be getting there real early. Cause I know you're an early guy. Perfect uh, transition. Actually, speaking of off the court, Tony, we announced uh, well, you announced to the people on Sunday the Tony Sterling Basketball Coaches Book Club. Let's go. I know there has been interest. I know we've got some things we can announce, some things we can't announce, secrets, things. 
But number one, Tony, the people are clamoring. We've been getting Ernie sent a little screenshot. He got the Coach K book. He's fired up. Coach CJ Council committed online, which is huge. How do people sign up for the fastest growing basketball coaches book club, Tony? Um, basically, if you have a Twitter or Instagram or whatever, um, you can DM me or, you know, you can comment in the comment section on those two uh, social media uh, deals at, um, at Creo TS2. Creo as in is spelled Creo in Haitian, K-R-E-Y-O-L TS2. That's how you can contact me or whatever. Uh, don't really need a you know phone number or email address. Uh, yep. You can either comment, you can uh, reach out to me, you can reach out to Joel, or you can reach out to the Game Shots basketball uh, account as well, and we can get that started. And um, next episode, we will we will have you know a gift for the, the first 10 people that reach out. So um, let's shout go. Out to, um, Coach Terrence Moach Williams with the PSA Cardinals for him, you know, doing that for us or whatever with mm-hmm. his book or whatever. I actually talked to him yesterday for a good minute or whatever. So, um, you know, in the future, probably have him on talking about his book, talking about the game. Um, you know, he's been in the, the – the upper level of uh, grassroots basketball for almost uh, 20 years. So uh, he got a good, you know, good wealth of knowledge about the game, uh, good, you know, good uh, learning experiences about life, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, no, shout out Coach Munch. That's that, huge. Very appreciative of that. But uh, the book, uh, I haven't started yet with the book, the first book, uh, you know, Kobe Bryant Mama Mentality book. And we'll start at June 1st. Actually, it'll be my probably my shoot, fifth time probably reading it or whatever. So mm-hmm. we'll start out with that book uh, June 1st, which I'll seen on uh, social media, you know, the three books for each, for you know, each month. You got the Mama Mentality in June. You got in July, you got the Coach K book. And uh, then in uh, August, uh, you got John Thompson's uh, book or whatever. But um, if you haven't gotten it or whatever, hold on real quick. Kind of hard to pick up. That's the book we'll be reading uh, June 1st. So go get it. Yep. Easy read, you know. Um, A lot of pictures coaches. too, which is good. Oh, yeah, you know, as coaches, it's probably easy for us to read, but, you know, um, you know, get your players involved. Um, 1,000%, I think. Go ahead. I was going to say, I just think, like, yeah, I think uh, Tony gifted me that book last summer, actually, when I was staying. uh, Larry and I were staying with him in Denham Springs, passing through. Um, And I have read bits and pieces. I've not read it cover to cover yet so i'm very excited um what are some of the benefits tony we got about four minutes left here um for coaches that are joining your book club um there's no real no real motive behind it or whatever it's just daily stuff that i do whatever especially during the off season where I read a lot of, you know, as well, you know, I got it with me, you know, I'm journal, I still journal every day or whatever, but it's something that I improve, keep my mind sharp or whatever, you know. Um, oh, no, also, Tony, I'm asking um, what are the coaches? So what are we building? So obviously you're starting this book club and coaches that signed up. So we got Ernie, we got coach council that are in, Plus you, myself, and I've heard a few other people reaching out on the slide. What are the uh, what are the benefits, Tony, for coaches? Are we what are we trying to build here with the Tony Sterling Basketball uh, Coaches Book Club? Um, at the end of the day, we're trying to share information. You know, uh, when we you know when we read books, everybody got a different um, you know, get some different from it, or whatever. So um, mm-hmm. it can be anything, you know. From improving uh, daily life skills or or trying to um, improve uh, certain routines with your players and stuff. So, uh, 
maybe, you know, as it progress, you know, uh, as we get bigger or whatever, maybe it can be like a, a weekly newsletter letter through email or, or we can, you know, uh, have like a little Monday um, review about, you know, the book that we're reading or whichever book that we're reading. But, you know, this is nothing but a little simple startup of, uh, you know, how to build a routine, how to build a habit or whatever. Because, you know, you can build a habit in 21 days or whatever on anything. So, uh, you know, like Coach, like Coach Taste Lock, I always tell us at Snow Valley, uh, learn how to learn. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, also being a blessing as well, you know, when you become a blessing, uh, you try to help people or whatever, uh, the world is a, a better place, so. 1,000%. But, yeah, no, I'm really excited. Um, And we are going to be doing – well, I'm going to be doing an Elite 75 review um, later this week. That was here last weekend in Charlotte. Shout out to Coach Wayne Davis. Um, he brought in excellent talent. Um, a lot of guys that I did not re like were not on my radar from the events we've worked in. A couple of them that can real play, really, really play. Um, three, well, four, excuse me, that really stood out. Hunter McCraw, he might have been the best player. He plays for Team Charlotte. Um, him and Amen Presley, who also is here in Charlotte. I'm not sure who Amen plays for. Um, those two guys, they were on the uh, court we I, I was coaching on and. I mean, they were exchanging buckets and they were high level, tough shot buckets and going in on purpose. So um, both those guys really stood out. Uh, Connor Hodgson um, from Charlotte also stood out to me. Uh, I thought he played really well, just comp competed. Uh, you know, the showcase basketball can be up and down. Um, and then finally, Daniel Himsey from Anadarko, uh, Oklahoma. Shout out to him and for the kids, FTK, for the 19-hour drive to get him, him the opportunity to compete. I thought he played very, very well. Um, and being as I spent some time in Oklahoma, I have, have reached out to coaches on his behalf already. Be on the lookout for him and more. Um, thanks for tuning in. Be a great teammate, as Tony has mentioned, and share this with a teammate. We are doing our absolute best to bring the highest quality of content in youth basketball to you each week using our platform to help you reach out immediately, if not sooner, if there's anything we can do. You've watched it, and I'll go rep it for and work for the results you want. See you next week.